Hi, welcome. My name is Dale McCluskey. And on this video series, I'd like to discuss how to rehabilitate an aggressive dog case. Um, what I'm going to show is with the right uh, information, uh, with the right attitude, with the right focus, and with the right um, structure, um, almost any dog can be brought back from the edge uh, when it comes to uh, aggression. Um, so when you talk about, again, I'm going to show, and again, I have another video that um, you know goes into the whole structure issue. But here, when you deal with an aggressive dog case, what you want to have is talk about this. Um, the first thing with um, understanding dog aggression is what you need is um, uh, first thing I do with people is having a reality check. When I talk about reality check, okay, uh, reality check is understanding. Um, where you're at in nature, um, you know, uh, as, it, as it pertains to uh, the uh, connection issue relationally uh, with your dog, understanding where you're standing in nature, where you're at in nature, so that you truly know um, where you're going. I mean, because often it, it is all about getting the right information. You know, when you talk about or when I discuss um, behavior with people, um, you know, oftentimes it's um, getting them on the on the same page um, is, is a process. I mean, it's something where you know, getting you know how we think about you know dogs comes from our experience with with people, but with with dogs, there's a lot of things, and this is where you get into these ideas about when people use uh, treats and clickers and learning theory. Um, there's a lot of things that are very deceiving because oftentimes. You know, we can be led down uh, making certain assumptions that aren't aren't true uh, when it comes to um, whether or not role changes happened. And you know, the popularity of certain ideas really uh, lends this. And this is why you know it's it's uh, there are so many issues right now. And and the other thing with dogs too is understand that you know um, through this connection to this relational issue. Um, what happens is you start to become you know objectified. It just it's the same. As parenting, you can, you know, if you're looking for a, a model or, or an example to follow, um, you can research on, on the internet, look up the four styles of parenting, and if you look at, you know, um, you know, permissive parenting, um, you'll see the same interplays there, the same kind of destructive psychology, the same things with the nar narcissistic and selfish child, how they kind of perceive the world around them, and um, you know the different, um, you know, problems it causes even with the parent. Trying to see things clearly, yeah, clarity. Um, so when it comes to dogs, I'm not suggesting. At the same time, I want to want to be clear. I'm not suggesting that um, you know because people have trouble with their dogs that they're automatically a permissive parent. That's not what I'm saying. I'm kind of grouping that into um, the type of an emotional connection that um, really um, you know creates that um, type of situation um, with, through this through this relational connection issue. So. Um, but here, you know, talk about dog aggression. Um, understand that just because a dog hasn't bitten, hasn't bitten anyone yet, doesn't necessarily mean that um, the dog isn't uh, going to be aggressive. Okay, that's the other thing that's very deceptive. So here, when we talk about, I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to show the structure here. But this is the thing about understanding the relational part of this, which we'll talk about is, you know, dogs know, you know, through, through the connection, relationally, dogs know whether or not you're becoming the real deal or not. Okay, this is the thing about um, the difference between um, controlling, controlling the problem, or changing, you know. Because um, here, what happens often is, um, you know, people can you put up walls and, and fences, okay, fences, and contain and control the problem, but never fix it. I mean, just like a time bomb waiting to go off. Of course, some of the owners feel, you know, blindsided and surprised. And I understand why. I mean, it's understandable considering the interplay here, where you're being objectified and you're not getting a real kind of reality check. You know, you're not really seeing things for what they are because you know, the dog is not in because you're, you're not, you know, exposing it. 
Okay? And you'll see it, I'm not doubting you will see it at times because you're not always going to be following that little way of thinking. You're going to be putting authority over your dog at times and you're going to see it coming out. But I want people to understand it's not just kind of uh, independent of, you know, it's giving you clues into where you're standing because with dogs it's different. Everything's connected. You know, it's not just everything branches off. And again, just like the tree, the tree and the branches that come off the tree, that's how behavior is. It, you know, it comes off, behavior comes off that role itself. And once a dog has the lead role, the behavior issues that result branch from that. Okay, so when you fix the tree, you fix the role, okay, you fix everything else. Okay, and you'll see diminishment of, of behavior. You'll see the, the power issue will start to decrease. Okay, just like a bathtub, you know, draining, the water draining out, you'll see diminishment. But again, get back to the thing about the real deal. Is so when you put the structure, because we're going to talk about structure here as it relates to fixing or, or, or rehabbing a, an aggressive dog case, um, you know, the whole issue here about control and change is that the goal here is to create change. I mean, it's everything we do, the structure that's going to go into place, it's part of who I am, okay? It's, it's a role changing tool. So if I use a crate, if I use a muzzle, those are tools that are going to help me advance the role changing process. It's going to, um, you know, by me having a structure in place, I'm not just containing a problem, um, it's, it's a reflection that represents who I'm becoming. Okay, and the dogs know that. So when I'm, you know, putting certain control or certain structure in place, I'm doing that so I can target the dog's decision making process. Okay, that's very important. I'm cornering the dog's mind, so to speak. Um, I'm not just isolating and putting the dog in, in certain areas, putting certain walls up. I'm in there, okay? I'm, I'm in the airspace, okay? That's very important. It's very important to keep in mind uh, about that, the difference here. I mean, dogs know the difference. So I'm not just controlling, I'm changing. So keep that in mind as I talk about structure because, again, um, everything you do is an opportunity to, to create change. Try to remember that. Everything you do, every moment you make, you want to be moving that mind. You want to be directing and putting influence over the mind. That's why everything comes to these call, uh, creating these follower moments that, that I discussed, okay? But here, in this structure, this is your home, and you're going to have, you know, certain, you know, divided up a certain way, however your home is laid out. But again, you want to have a crate, highly recommend it, need it for, for fixing an aggressive dog case. But again, the crate is not for just for isolation or punishment, okay? It's, you know, you have to understand the dog's way of thinking, it's, 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 it's the dog's floating around your house, but they think they own everything, okay? Just because, you know, this is the thing about reactive and proactive part of the methodology is if you're more emotional, you're going to be reactive. I mean, that's the whole permissive type of, of thinking. It's very destructive in a way because it's reactive and it's kind of self-analyzing in a way that doesn't, you know, help people. Here, change comes through being proactive. That's why when you look at me doing the moments, I'm not waiting for something to happen because I've already got, and this is what you've done, I've already taken a three-dimensional view of the relationship. I already know relationally you know, where, uh, where that person's standing or how they're perceived. And so it's just like getting in the airspace of a narcissistic, selfish kid that, that needs boundaries put up. You know, you're in their bedroom. You're saying, hey, where are you going? You're in their airspace, and you're going to get challenged. You're going to get kick, kicked back, right? Um, because they're saying, because they're asking the same questions, is this the real deal? My, my parent, my mom or dad haven't kind of done anything really to show that, that, that they're, you know, now they are, you know, I, they aren't going to like it. But deep down, I believe this even about dogs and about, you know, comparison with children, but um, they know that you have their best interests at heart. I mean, they know that, that but they're testing it. They're going to, just like a dog's going to test this too, say, is this is this real? Is this Fred or Sue or whoever? Are they the real deal, or are they just putting on a show? But they can tell whether you're just trying to walk the fence or keep one foot on this side, one foot on the other side. It doesn't it won't work. Okay, I want to be upfront with you. This isn't going to work that way. I mean, or it's going to take you a long time to get to where you need to go. This is about you know we want to get this fixed. We want to get that aggression issue fixed under control and, and push back. So here, again, what you want to establish is a, is a spot you put the crate, and again, the dog is, again, that's, I own that spot. So I'm going to create moments in around the crate, but again, this is where it comes to using that muzzle too. So you want a muzzle, 
if you're, if you're using, if you're dealing with an aggressive dog case, even if I'm doing a basic role changing model for people, and maybe the dog hasn't hit the aggressive level, and they're trying to fix like house breaking and certain issues, I still put the structure model in place. Okay, it's it's a it's you know every every success has a game plan. Okay, this is a game plan that you know you have to see and we're laying out. But again, um, you want a muzzle because again we want to we want to reduce the potential for a bad outcome. We want to take that tool, that biting tool out of the dog's toolbox, so to speak, um, as much as possible. Okay, because here, understand, when you're creating these moments, um, you know, you're going to be interacting with your dog differently than before. It's going to be targeted, you know, how, how we're doing, how you're doing the methodology. Um, you don't want challenge level where you could get bit. Especially here, once the dog has a certain level of power, okay, it doesn't take much. The challenge levels are so high. Okay, um, they can be um, extreme. So as soon as you start interacting this way, well, you're you're putting the dog into the sick position, and you're you know you're um, creating these follower states of mind, these follower moments. You're expressing that um, the challenge can be you can, trigger, you can trigger aggression, even though that's not the goal of the system. That's why I do my methodology the way I do it, very smooth and fluid. But when you get a certain level of power, it doesn't take much, especially. Um, you know, when I'll discuss here a little bit on, we talk about uh, relational triggers. And relational triggers, what relational triggers are, um, it's when you're being, you know, objectified, um, you become so empowering to the dog, um, it's like a drug to them, it's different, because you might perceive that as a dog loves you, but really they, they, they're possessing you. That's why you can always tell who the kind of weak link is in, in the relationship, if there's more than one person in the home. If you put the dog in the middle, and put the people living in the home around the dog say in a circle and you let that dog go, that dog will go to the first person or, or that person or it could be another dog in the house or a situation, even a doorway. They'll go to the situation, other dog or person where they get the most power from. Okay, you know I see it. So when you when you watch your dog, even when you're on walk walking the dog, you'll see the dog seeking out power in their mind. Okay, it's like they're wrapping their mind around that source of empowerment. And that's why you have to get a uh, you know, reality check, ask yourself the question, you know, am I the source of power? You know, because you're going to have to change anyway. Change only comes through you changing. So regardless of whether you identify you as a source of power, which if dealing with dog aggression, you likely are. I mean, over 90% of the time, it's, you know, it, it's the person directly. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're the source of it. Um, shouldn't say over 90 percent, like 99.9 percent. .9%, okay, it's, it's it's something to do with how we're connecting with the dog, and then that will spill out or connect to other situations. Okay, starts with us, and it follows a path and connects to everything else. That's why you go associated triggers. Um, why a dog will bite somebody a lot faster if the dog is with, say, a person. Say, if the dog, if I have a dog here on my lap and the dog looks at me as only me and say if, if another person came up to pet on the dog or even to you know do something or whatever not aggressive or anything but the dog's going to lash out and, and bite that person really fast because that dog thinks they own me. so i mean that's aggression okay it's all about but it's, this whole issue about aggression you know i'm putting a label on it but you know this is for um a lot of people to, to really pay attention to okay but again we want to sever and this is what we do want to do. We want to sever um, certain connections that the dog is being empowered from or through. If I'm the problem, then I want to change me, but then the crate's going to help me kind of sever that connection a little bit because I don't want that dog hanging out with me on the couch, bed, bed areas, certain patterns of interaction which are perceived as just weakness, okay? That dog is, is with me for the wrong reasons. I need to sever that connection um, while I'm, I'm changing perceptions, I'm becoming a leader through these, creating these moments. But the other severing can be other dogs, okay, in the household. Again, um, your dog could be hanging with another dog in the home. One is going to be, you know, more dominant than, than the other one. But the problem is, I'm kind of on the other side looking in because, um, you know, that dog thinks they're definitely running the show and ahead of me. But what they're doing is they're, they're with that other dog and they're kind of pounding that dog down. You may not even see, get a good sense of it, but it's like the, the big brother, little brother syndrome. They're being empowered through that rela relationship, through that connection. Okay, that's what happens. 
And so you need to divide the conquer. If you have more than one dog, you want to um, have two crates and you want to start to divide and conquer, okay? You treat them as individuals, but you're going to be working their mind, targeting them. So I'm going to have them separated for, it could be a few weeks, you know, it could be, you know, three or four months. However long it takes until I start to become the pivoting point in the relationship where they both know that I own everything, I own me, I own them, everything comes through me, and I get the relational connection fixed, okay? But again, I'm going to be working off crates, divide and conquer. And so what you do, what happens is everything kind of becomes one big exercise in a way, but what you have to look at it, it's for the greater good. I mean, your dog, this could be the last hope for your dog. If your dog's already bitten somebody, if you don't get it fixed, it's a ticking time bomb, and the dog does bite someone, it could be out of your control. And deep down, you're probably not happy anyway. I mean, you know your dog's not happy because what this you know, connection carries to is a, it's, a, it's a level of stress on the dog, okay? Because, you know, it, and I'll talk about this on another video, this whole thing about fear and stress, it's not exactly how it appears because it, it kind of messes with the dog's mind that way because it's, it's still about um, getting the relationship fixed at this level. It's still relational. It's all about taking, you know, creating role change. It follows the same path, but um, so if you're dealing with a dog that looks fearful, you have to reverse psychology. You got to go totally opposite. Okay, and that's hard to do, especially if my thinking certain thinking patterns are a certain way. I may have a real problem with that, but that's what has to happen. So here, other dogs, you're going to sever that, divide and conquer, and then you're going to start again create multiple moments during the daytime around. So, but I'm going to divide this off so the dog cannot just free range, I'm going to block it, baby gate, doorways, whatever. I want that crate in an area where I can, can, can really control. And so that dog can be in and out a lot. Maybe a half an hour, an hour in the crate, back out. But when the dog's out, he's in my immediate space. I'm, I'm doing moments, these follow moments. I'm taking a hold of the collar, using that sit position. I'm not speaking commands. I won't speak commands in an aggressive dog case. Um, could be, you know, it could be two months. You know, I mean, because I'm taking it directly through the relational role, okay? That dog, that dog's resisting a certain level. It's not because they don't understand this whole idea of learning. No, they understand perfectly well through connection what you're doing. That's why they're resisting it. Because it's coming directly through the parental role, okay? It's coming through strength. Um, and I'm speaking a, I'm speaking a language, language of nature. It, it's unspoken, okay? It's, it's context. It's relational context. So I'm performing multiple moments all over the place. Back in the crate, out again, multiple moments. Leash work, lead the mind. Important to have a muzzle. Use that muzzle so you don't get bit, okay? Eventually the muzzle goes away. I mean, everything, you know, everything's a tool. Even the crates can go away after. I mean, everything, this is just a structure I have so I can relax. I don't have to worry about a bad outcome, someone else getting bitten. But this represents change, though. This isn't just something where I'm just, I'm just kind of I'm maneuvering the dog around and I'm not creating any change. I'm changing how I think. I'm changing how I interact. I'm the parent, I'm in the airspace, I'm targeting. That's what I'm doing here. I'm targeting that dog's decision making process. I'm all over. That dog's world is rocking, okay? That dog's world is rocking. Now, that dog's like, what is going on? I mean, Dale is out of his mind. Well, I'm not out of my mind, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm putting that structure in place. So, even if I start to walk outside, it's mind and body. It's not about distance, how far I go down the street anymore. It's about me. Um, you know, getting uh, my approach has changed because it's about it's about my approach because it's coming as a follow. Okay, so follow a moment. That dog is right at my side, coming through me. Um, I'm working to get my level that I'm being objectified down, and you sense that that head will turn in, move in. But you have to be working the dog. You know, it's just about getting getting comfortable with the techniques, working the dog's mind, and to put the structure in place, and just keep working it until I get to a level where I just know that I have created change. Um, you know, so, you know, when you look at um, how long, people say, well, Dale, how long do I do this? Um, understand that it's for the greater good. It's like, your other options is, is what? I mean, you're, you're going to end up, you know, having your dog give up on your dog or something happen. You have to keep that structure in place until um, you get to a point where you'll see diminishment of behavior, you will. Okay, and that's the thing, is like every day, and what I suggest is you take some notes, you can write down, you know, progress, what you're seeing um, as you go along. But, um, 
but the whole trust thing is you'll you'll be in tune these interplays you'll, you'll sense that dog is is going downwards okay and you'll be testing it, testing it in a way too because you know even these when I talk about these associate triggers you get you got treat and I'll make another video on, on exercises on I'm working on um, certain exercises with um, kind of opening the door of your dog's mind and closing again okay because you what you're gonna do is instead of avoiding situations you're going to be working the mind, okay? You're going to be setting up these exercises, these controlled exercises, so that you can um, be, you know, when that picture is being painted, so to speak, and that's what happens with these associated tr uh, triggers. I'll talk about that in, in another video about how the picture's painted in the dog's mind and empowers the dog's mind. It's like you, you have you have the paintbrush now and you're repainting it, okay? But you need to recreate the situation so that now I can interrupt. Okay, I can I can bring meaningful influence. I can target the dog's decision making. I'm saying, hey, no, I own it. Okay, instead of it being an empowering situation or interaction, it's an opportunity for me to uh, claim it. Okay, and say, you know, you might get to meet whatever or, or whoever or whatever the situation is, but it's going to come through me um, as a follow. Okay, that's what that's what you're communicating. It's communication. So, um, you know, so anyway. Just think about this. I mean, um, you know, I, I really encourage you because I, I be truly believe that everybody has um, the ability to do this. Um, you know, the first step is getting the right information. So what you're getting here is you're getting the right information. I'm not saying it's easy. I mean, it could be probably one of the most challenging things that you ever do in your life, but it's also highly uh, rewarding. Okay, when you come to that point, when you fix um, fix your dog, you can look back on it. With a sense of, of pride, uh, of, uh, of uh, accomplishment, of you know, and, and knowing that you know, because that's what love is. I mean, love is the ability to step out of the boat, so to speak, and um, suspend your own you know ideas or, or wants for a period of time, um, and, and so that you can fix fix a dog. Because love isn't you know um, restrictive that way. I mean, that's the thing. We get dogs to meet our needs, but there's times, points in our lives where we have to, um, you know, we have to go further than that. We have to say it's not just about meeting my needs, you know, it's mutual need. And, and even though those needs, the dogs can be different that way because, you know, if you look at leadership or, or authority or influence, you know, certain ways, a lot of times people want to label that and say, well, you know, that's I don't want to do this to my dogs. That's no, no, understand. It's strength, nature's about strength and weakness. It's relational. Dogs really do have this need, and um, it goes to the very core, the very heart of, of behavior. I mean, it goes to, you know, when you look at a balanced dog, a dog that's in a state of harmony, um, this is what how it, it happens. It comes through how I'm connecting through nature, through that relational role. Um, I have to. So here, it's about really the goal is to change how you think. Um, and that's a, a tall order sometimes for people. But um, it's just nothing more than basic confidence building exercise. You're not being aggressive, you're not being mean to your dog. You're just being assertive, there's a calmness to this. Even the techniques are very smooth and fluid. But definitely there's a, you know, there's a, uh, there's a leadership element here. I mean, it really is so. And dogs really do know where, you know, where, you, where you're standing in, in, in nature that way. They're able to, to get a picture of that over a period of time. So anyway, I just want to encourage you, um, there is hope, um, it is possible to bring a dog back from the edge, and um, again, with the right attitude, focus, and, and game plan. So thanks very much for watching, I hope you have a great day.